Temperatures drop in Chicago. City leaders are racing to keep hundreds of migrants currently sleeping outside warm for the winter. In about an hour, Mayor Brandon Johnson will update the city about what's being done to help those new arrivals. CBS News' Marissa Perlman is live now in Grace and Peace Lutheran Church in Austin with what we can expect to learn. Marissa, good morning. Good morning to you, Jackie. Yeah, the mayor will be meeting here with his team to discuss a new plan, a new partnership between philanthropic and faith leaders here in Chicago to sort of try to come to a solution for the migrants here who some are still sleeping outside. And for those who are facing this issue, as you mentioned, as winter is quickly approaching, there's an urgent need for shelter. In Brighton Park, construction plans for a winterized tent base camp hit a snag after its older woman says the land where it could go up could could contain pollutants. The city saying it's confident plans can continue, but so far, no word on exactly when. Governor Pritzker announcing $160 million towards construction of this site and to a former CVS in Little Village to turn that spot into another shelter. For volunteers who work with the asylum seekers, they tell us this can't happen soon enough. We have significant fears about things like frostbite, hyperthermia, um, people here aren't used to the cold at all. We've had a year to prepare for this. This is not a surprise. And yet we still have the city plan for new arrivals in Chicago is to be dumped on a sidewalk. So again, this will be the city's plan to mobilize help, those resources for shelter to the migrant community. But Jackie, it's still not clear exactly how this plan will work and, ex and how it will be funded. We're live in Austin this morning. Yeah, Don Anthony, the village of Schaumburg board unanimously voted tonight. They voted to approve an ordinance that would establish a tax on hotel stays of 30 days and longer. Trustee Madej? Aye. Trustee Dunham? Aye. Trustee Sullivan? Aye. The idea behind the new tax is to make it too expensive for anyone to send migrants to Schaumburg's hotels. The board called Tuesday night's meeting, apparently after getting word that a migrant move was in the works. Residents we talked to have mixed reactions. Wade Ash doesn't mind having migrants moving into his northwestern suburb, but Nicole Murray was happy to hear that the village is taking action before they may come. The migrants, you know, they're people. We want to be able to take care of them. I think Schomburg is doing a good thing by being proactive with this decision that they make it now before last minute. It's enacting new rules to prevent migrant stays. Elk Grove Village has crafted an ordinance barring hotel and motel owners from providing a room to anyone without medical documentation, verifying that the individual has been free of contagious diseases over the last 60 days. The rule will not apply to anyone who has been living in the U.S. for at least a year. This ordinance also prevents warehouse owners from turning buildings into temporary housing. Schomburg and Rosemont recently enacted a long-term hotel stay tax, which officials say will protect their convention business. Migrants continue to come to Chicagoland. One of the largest suburbs is taking fast action to keep them out of the village. Thank you for joining us tonight at 9. I'm Don Hasbro. And I'm Anthony Regarding the site, and you saw from Chopper 7 that gravel is being laid here at this empty lot at 38th in California. Two South Shore residents, in the meantime, appear virtually in front of a judge after filing a lawsuit against the city. They want to file an injunction to stop the city from using public spaces for migrant use. A lawsuit brought on by two South Shore residents, Natasha Dunn and Jimmy Darrell Jones, is intended to stop Mayor Brandon Johnson and the city of Chicago from housing migrants in public parks, police stations, so-called tent camps, and public schools, including South Shore High School. The case will now move on to another division of the court. In the meantime, gravel is being laid down at one of those future campsites, and equipment is arriving here at 38th in California, despite weeks of protests by residents here. We talked to one protester who asked us not to show her face to protect her identity. I want to hear something, too, from the, from the mayor. Please, because we support him when he loading the office. He's supposed to take the community first. People who live in the area say soil tests from the lot here in Brighton Park show the land is contaminated with toxic metals and is not safe. And they do not want the city to disrupt the area. This land is get poisoned. They used to be a factory. They contaminated. It's not fit for the human to live. 
and the government tell us they will do the soy tax. What is the tax result? We don't see nothing. If this legal action moves forward, it could prevent the mayor from disrupting park programs, violating zoning laws, and he would have to disclose fully how much money is being spent on supporting incoming migrants. It's crucial. We cannot abandon families and asylum seekers and let them go through Chicago's winter alone. Mayor Brandon Johnson today announcing a new initiative with Chicago's faith leaders to help shelter and feed migrants. It comes as the city scrambles to build temporary shelter for thousands of asylum seekers. Fox 32's Dane Placco reports on how many people will get help. As temperatures plummet and migrants continue to pour into Chicago, Mayor Johnson announced a new partnership with Chicago area churches to help ease the migrant crisis. They're calling it the Unity Initiative. The Unity Initiative will prioritize getting pregnant women, children, and all of those sleeping outside the police stations or on the floors into temporary housing as quickly as possible through churches all over the city of Chicago. Funded by $350,000 in private donations, the partnership will initially involve 17 churches, housing up to 20 migrants each. The migrants will live at the churches and be provided food, medical care, and social services, and eventually employment. I had a really clear job to do when I took over Bubba, and it was, this brand is in decline, it's been in decline for a really long time, and if we do not attract young drinkers to come and drink this brand, there will be no future for Bud Light. So I had this super clear mandate. It's like we need to evolve and elevate this incredibly iconic brand. And my, what I brought to that was a belief in, okay, what, is, what, do we, what does evolve and elevate mean? It means inclusivity. It means shifting the tone. It means having a campaign that's truly inclusive and feels lighter and brighter and different and appeals to women and to men mm -hmm. and representation is at sort of the heart of evolution you've got to see people who reflect you in the work and we had this hangover i mean bud light had been kind of a brand of bratty kind of out of touch humor and it was really important that we had another approach